Hi, I'm Guy. And I'm Roseanne. And it's time to tour our Embassy Dolphin. So about three weeks ago, we picked up our 2022 Embassy Dolphin S built on the Ford Transit chassis. As you can see from our other videos, we've been getting our van ready for the road. And now it's time to give you a tour of the inside. But before we take you inside, let's take a quick look around the outside. The first thing that you notice about the outside of the embassy is what you don't see. There's no air conditioner or anything else on the roof of this vehicle to tell you that it's an RV. In fact, there's almost nothing on the outside of this van that tells you that it's an RV rather than simply a passenger van. It's a very stealth design. We had our van ceramic coated to help preserve its shiny silver exterior. On the sides of the van near the roof, you can see the vents for the internal exhaust fans. More on those later. Running along the bottom, you can see the embassy installed running board that makes entering and exiting the sliding door a snap. In the lower left corner, you can see the magnet that holds the rear cargo door when it swings all the way around to the side of the van. Our Embassy Dolphin is built on the high roof Ford Transit all wheel drive, dual rear wheel extended build, 22 feet in length. Here you see the rear double cargo doors. Check out our channel for earlier videos in which we show the rear cargo area and the modifications we made to it. Around to the driver's side, you can see one of the few external signs that this is in fact an RV, as you see here the plug for connecting to 30 amp shore power. A little further up, just in front of the rear wheels on the driver's side, you can see the exhaust pipe for the furnace and hot water heater. You may also notice that we elected not to get the driver's side running board in order to accommodate issues concerning our driveway. Finally, up just behind the driver's door is the fuel intake hatch. This Ford Transit comes with the optional 31 gallon fuel tank. We aren't going to talk much about the Ford chassis because you can find lots of information about that online. But we did want to show you this one feature that's very helpful for parking a vehicle of this size. Here you can see me using the Ford 360 degree camera display to pull the van through the very tight space between our backyard fence posts. You can see that this, the display shows me exactly what's on both sides of my vehicle so that I can pull into this narrow space. Okay, let's look inside. The first thing that attracted us to the Dolphin S floor plan is how open it is. Unlike a lot of Class B RVs, the Dolphin S floor plan, coupled with the big panoramic windows, really make the space seem larger than it is. A unique design feature of all Embassy RVs is they are built without any wood. All of the surfaces you see here are marine grade vinyl or marine grade plastic. If you've ever spent any time in a closed car on a cool night, you know how quickly moisture can condense inside. Over time, in a traditional RV, that moisture will warp the woodwork or cause mildew to set in. None of Embassy's building material absorb any moisture. They will never warp or rot. As we mentioned outside, <clears throat> there are no holes in the roof of this RV. The AC compressor is beneath the van and the evaporator is beneath the passenger sofa. Also beneath the passenger sofa are the 920 amp hour master volt lithium batteries. Also, the AC is ducted with ducts above the passenger sofa and above the freezer. The ducted system is quieter than the overhead blowers found in most Class B's. In place of the overhead fans found in most RVs, which require additional holes in the roof, 
Embassy uses four fan-powered side vents, two in the front and two in the back. Two fans blow in and two out. While I'm here, let's look at the TV. It's a 32-inch high-definition set that drops out of the ceiling. I can sit on the sofa with my feet up and catch my favorite shows. When I'm done, the TV folds right back into the ceiling. The driver's side sofa has a lagoon table mount in three different locations, providing a lot of flexibility for locating the table. The third mount is on the bed extender, which can even be brought outside. When it's time to sleep, the beds offer multiple configuration options. Remove the back cushions and make up the sofas as two twin beds. Completing the passenger side bed involves pulling out the nested bed extender, putting it in position and adding the cushion. Alternatively, the sofas can be powered away from the walls, either a little to create a bit of elbow room or all the way together to form a queen size bed with the back cushions then replaced. Above the passenger side sofa, there's a Sony Blu-ray player, as well as an HDMI port we can use to stream content from our phones or tablets to the TV. There is storage, a 110 household outlet with USB ports, lighting, and a 12 volt USB outlet that does not require the inverter. You can also see our push pin travel map that we hope to fill with the pins in coming years. Above our adventure await sign, you see the thermostat and controls for the heat and hot water. The driver's side also has a 12 volt USB outlet, additional storage, and another 110 volt household outlet. All of the cabinets are positive latching and are interconnected to allow storage of longer items except for one separate compartment that is lockable. Let's take a look at the kitchen. Here you see the microwave. You can also see a nice overhead sign we received as a van warming gift from some friends. And here's the sink with removable cover. It's a very deep stainless steel sink. Here we Velcroed this paper towel holder into the corner. Beneath the sink, Embassy provides a trash can that fits securely into a base that is bolted to the floor. We relocated the bolts about four inches to the right in order to make room to install this wire basket that holds soaps and such. It also leaves a little floor space we can use for something else. In this cabinet is where you'll also find the monitor that allows you to see the fresh water bag and judge how full or empty it is. It's not so clear in this video, but we can see here that our bag is full. It holds 23 gallons. The cabinet under the counter holds a pull-out silverware drawer. Beneath that, you can see the No Dirty Water brand submicron filter and the furnace slash on-demand water heater. This cabinet also houses the No Dirty Water ozone purifier that we run once per week for 15 minutes to keep the entire water system disinfected. Back up top, under the microwave, there are two lights and the smoke detector and carbon monoxide detector. Between the two lights is a standard 110 volt electrical outlet. Next to the sink is counter space that can be used for a kettle or for food prep or for the portable induction cooktop that is supplied by Embassy. Moving to the other side of the kitchen, you see the pantry. It has four soft closed drawers. The top one is suitable for taller items. There's also some storage space on the floor below the drawers. Right now, I'm keeping our campfire cookware here. The 12 volt compressor refrigerator freezer 
is from an Italian company called Vitro Frigo. The freezer is more than adequate. It comes with this tray <clears throat> for tiny cubes, but we also bought this one with a lid for making large cocktail cubes. Hey, it's important to have priorities. Ours is gin and tonic. <laughs> The fridge is quite spacious, as you can see, with adequate shelves and large produce bins. The unit is very well insulated and both the fridge and freezer maintain cold temperatures quite well. Above the freezer, there is quite a spacious storage area. We have our induction cooktop here and it has plenty of remaining room for other cookware or miscellaneous items. While the doors of the Vitro Frigo are not stainless steel, like some other brands, one upside of that is that they hold magnets, so you can stick some odds and ends or decorations on the doors with those. Let's look at the bathroom, which closes off from the kitchen with this accordion privacy door. By lifting this shelf and the attached curtain, we expose the toilet. We chose the Lavio Dry Flush. You can see other videos online that show how it works, but maybe we'll post one in the future. With the shelf down, we have this vanity grooming area with a light up mirror. The mirror also tilts up for taller folks. There are also under cabinet lights that can be controlled separately. Up top, there is cabinet space as well as a standard 110 volt outlet for shavers or a hair dryer. The bathroom also houses the shower. Up above, you can see the hooks for hanging the shower curtain. The shower head pulls out of the wall and has an on off valve in the handle. Most class B RVs cram the shower into one side or other of the center aisle, making for a very tight fit. But utilizing the center aisle, Embassy has created quite a roomy shower area. The floor mat is removable to expose the shower pan and drain. On the wall opposite the toilet are two large storage cabinets, which Embassy calls the linen closet and the wardrobe. You can see we've hung a bag on the wardrobe door, inspired by a similar mod made by members of the Embassy Owners and Wannabes Facebook group. The linen closet has four large soft closed drawers and an additional storage space on the floor. In the wardrobe, we've added another storage bag from hooks above the clothes rack bar. The bar creates a nice sized closet for hanging jackets or other items that you'd prefer to hang rather than fold. And there is some good floor storage space below. Behind the bathroom, is the rear cargo area that you can see here. We've done a series of other videos about our modifications to the cargo area that you can see by subscribing to our channel. Directly behind the cab is the C-Zone control panel from which you can control the lights, the power sofa, the fans, the inverter, the water pump, and the water purification system. If you've landed on this video because you're researching Embassy RVs or Class B RV life, stay tuned for just another minute for a couple important resources. As for this video and our channel, please subscribe if you want to see our past and future videos about our van and our travels in it. And hit the thumbs up to tell us you've enjoyed this tour. Okay, for those researching Embassy, one channel you should add to your subscriptions is Roads of Life. Embassy does not use dealers, so the process of ordering one is very different from most. Robert has a series of terrific videos that cover the various steps in the process from soup to nuts. They are an indispensable resource. Also, Robert and Susan own Embassy's other popular floor plan, the Dolphin SL, with two sleeping areas. So you can learn all about that floor plan on Roads of Life. The second channel you need is Scott Watson's Go Small, Live Large. Scott has posted many interviews with Terry Minix, the Vice President of Embassy and the man behind its innovative design. These are must-see for anyone researching Embassy. 
Also, Scott lives full-time in his Winnebago Travato, so his channel is a wealth of information on all aspects of Class B RVing. These channels, and hopefully ours, will help you on your research journey. We hope you found this helpful, and we'll see you next time here on Amore Van.